Okay. I'm going to mute myself. Um, for everybody that doesn't know, this is my husband, Greg. Um, we've been married <laughs> for, it'll be 20 years. A long years. time. Yeah. Long time. <laughs> it'll be 20 years. Oh, over, which is definitely a long time. Um, so he has seen me go from um, being in Beachbody to moving over to Color Street. And I am... Um, yeah, yeah, we, we want them to be. Okay. Um, so he kind of saw the transition between like Beach Body and the nail business. And I think, what did I say to you when I thought, when I was thinking about doing Color Street, I think I said to you. I think you thought it was going to be crazy. Like you, yes. didn't, you didn't understand like if there was a good opportunity or not. And, you know, um, I thought it was a good opportunity. So Yeah, so we're going to talk about three different things tonight. Uh, we're gonna talk about the opportunity and like kind of his view of it and the reason why. Um, a little bit about social media because he's kind of seeing it from not our perspective, obviously. Um, seeing it from the outside. <laughs> but he also has the inside version because of what I'm doing. So he's kind of like a, a good one, I feel like to be able to see that. And then and then also about like our relationship and how we make this business work for us and our family because I also work full time and he works full time and we have three kids. So um, I think that will actually kind of help. So, sure, yeah. All right, so why don't you, I'm gonna let him take, take it away. I'm gonna put the chat up there. So if you guys have questions while we're talking, I really like for you guys to put your questions in the chat and then I'll ask questions as we go along so maybe the first thing we'll talk about is the business opportunity sure yeah and um hi, hi everybody uh when margaret mentioned doing this i was a little bit skeptical so hopefully i'll warm up as she gets going because i don't view this as kind of an easy thing to do um but yeah i mean i, I saw you know and the first thing i would kind of jump out and say is it's not I'm not. Well, I don't think what we're going to give you here is like unicorns and dreams and cartoons. It's not all you know, kind of super hunky dory. It's it's work. Um, I see the effort Margaret puts through, and I think what Margaret's referring to in terms of the value of the business is my background. Is I used to help run a mutual fund, and now I invest people's money. And so as part of doing that, when she was getting into the entrepreneurial side of the world. I would approach it from sort of the lens. In my old life, I would visit, I visited like 2,000 companies where I would meet with like the CEOs and the CFOs, and you wanted to know whether or not you were gonna invest in the company. So when it, if, if anybody runs an idea by me, and definitely cut me off and ask up, but if anybody runs an idea by me, right, wrong, or indifferent, I can't help but put on the hat it asks if it's a worthwhile opportunity, if there's enough room out there for success and all that kind of stuff, and sort of how is it going to go. So for the most part, I'm actually a pretty cynical person. I, I, I think I have kind of like a high standard, especially for what you guys can all appreciate is if you're in a 50-50 relationship, and if you're a husband, it always feels like an 80-20 relationship in the wrong direction, but in any case, if you're in a relationship, what you're asking yourself is, is this going to be a healthy dynamic for our family? And so from my perspective, you know, I've given you my background and that's sort of what I do. What I liked about it is when Margaret was doing other stuff, I like the idea of her doing some, something entrepreneurial, uh, if and for only the reason, and I see all you guys kind of doing this, is that it can reinforce a positive version of yourself. If you're putting yourself out there and you have to live and sort of wear the uniform, at least what I've seen in my life and in my career, is that when you have to carry yourself in a way that has somebody else have confidence in you, whether or not, in my case, they're entrusting you with their money, or if in your case, is people are working together and why should anybody follow anybody? You have to be the right type of person. First and foremost, whether or not you earn a buck, that's a good thing. You know, that's a good part of somebody's life. Secondly, you're not going to want to waste a bunch of time if, in fact, there's no opportunity. A lot of other things that I think Margaret kicked around and, in fact, tried, and I won't be negative about anything because a lot of people are making, obviously, great money doing other things, is from what I saw about other stuff is, you know, 
if, if in essence you guys are all, you know, working with a large network of people, say a thousand people who are like your people that you're trying to attract and potentially sell to, and you need all of them to make a purchase every month, that's tough. Like that's actually not even fair to those other people, you know, like they don't have to support your business. Everybody should only do something if it serves them. Nobody likes to be forced to do anything. And so in a business where it was like a small number of people and you're really hoping that they commit a large dollar amount, I viewed that as tough. So ironically, what Margaret's talking about, and I can remember being in my office one day when she called up and she was like, I know you're going to think this is crazy. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, she's going to try something else. Like, I can't believe there's another one coming. And then she goes, I'm thinking of selling like nails. I said, you mean like nails, like on your fingernails? And she said, yeah. I said, just, you know, girly little nails. And she said, yeah. And I said, are they, you know, pretty cheap? And she said, they're like 10 to 15 bucks. And I said, perfect, do it. You know, and like, I think I hung up the phone and she was like, I don't understand. I said, well, what it is, is for my investor side, is it's like Starbucks, it's like Dunkin' Donuts. No one ever, when they're, you know, think about, you know, cutting their budget, worries about two bucks, four bucks, five bucks, depending on the foo foo coffee that you guys drink. Um, <laughs> you just don't worry, it's insignificant, and that's why Starbucks has been an amazing stock, is you go from having one cup of coffee a day to like three, and yet it's insignificant in terms of what you're doing. I viewed this opportunity as like that I, for my well, and, and two, and I think you felt that way because I was um, selling beach body at that point, And that was asking people, you know, to spend between like a hundred and two hundred dollars a month. And it's a very, it's a very emotional product Yeah, where he was kind of like, uh, this seems like fun. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I, I, my, the beach body side, I think it's wonderful. And again, tons of people are doing awesome stuff with that. From my perspective, that was like trying to get somebody to change religion. You'd kind of watch the process from afar, and I'd feel bad for Margaret, and I'd feel bad for the other side, because people want to do yoga. They don't necessarily want to drink these shakes. They're kind of wondering, is the stuff really odd? But bottom line is, and you girls have all been on the positive end of it, what I've at least seen is just girls being girly and occasionally throwing on pink glitter nails. It's like, do whatever the hell you want to do, but that's not that big of a deal. Nobody's like living and dying over it. And at least what I see Margaret doing, a lot of you guys do is it just allows you to carry yourself in a happy, fun, sort of positive way that, and then I looked at like the economic value and you know, this is where, um, you know, Margaret said something I said early on caught a little bit of traction and I kind of said, and I don't think the math actually works out perfect, but it was like, if you can get five people who can get five people and everybody can sell 25 sets of nails, and I called it like five, five, 25, there was some powerful math behind it. And so that math probably isn't perfect. And Margaret's told me I'm wrong. Uh, well, no, 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 I didn't tell him it's wrong. <laughs> I just kind of said the five, like the five actually does work. Um, but you need five people who want to work the business and you have to be able to have those five people recruit five people. And if you think about it, like when you're first starting off in this business, everything is so, oh, so overwhelming. And if you're not thinking like I need to go out and, you know, recruit a hundred people to make yeah. this business work. If you can just think to yourself, if I recruit five people that want to work the business and they can get those five people to recruit five people, it is a massive effect. So it's not like stop thinking like so big, just cone it down and say to yourself, yeah. just give me my five people that really want to work this business and let's get those five to get their five. So, but, but you know how our, our system works, you know, like you have to have so many people and they have to make so much money. Yeah. But, but still, I think if you really think of it that way, yeah. it, it is a very doable process. Yeah, and either way, and definitely everybody hit me with questions on what I was thinking there, but if I'm explaining it right, what I've constantly been at least trying to emphasize to my heart is, you know, this is going to sound funny, but calm the hell down. Like, relax, you know. Remember that it's like you can't build it in a month, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was like if you can get five really high-quality people to say, you know what, I want to learn from you, and eventually I'll get five high-quality people. And if you just think that way, that doesn't see – I always want to make things efficient 
not feel hard. If it feels hard, you'll be tempted to quit, you know, but like if you can break it down to a digestible number, like the whole notion of, you know, 10 miles seems really far, but the first step doesn't seem like that big of a deal. And if you just say over the next five months, your goal is to get one person a month. that's a really high quality person. And then as you get other people, great bonus gravy, you can stick them under people and all that good stuff that you guys know more about than me. And then if you look and you go like any other job, and that's one basic principle that I'm, that I think I wrote down a little bit, which is treat it like any other job. Your job not only is to recruit those people, but then take them under your wing and train them to be able to do the exact same thing you did. That's any great manager in any business is always training people to, in essence, replace them. And then the 25, like, I don't think that works, but I was really just trying to get to the $300, because when I looked at your crazy spreadsheet, at least in my brain, it was like, okay, 300's important, it's 10 to $14, like 25, but the bottom line is, then it just told me like, hey, it's a numbers game. Get 1,000 people kind of roughly looking at your action, get 300 people, get 500 people, sell that $300 worth the product a month, and then focus on building those pieces, but really that team effect of what can you build in 12 months, and mind you that you're not putting, like one thing I was extremely cynical of, and everybody talks about it in direct sales, I did not want to hear any kind of garbage about like, okay, pay $2,000 up front, or consistently buy nails every month. You know, like if, you know, if somebody wants to choose to buy, you know, 30 bucks worth of nails and give them away and consider that part of their routine, that's a choice. But at least what I liked is I didn't feel like Margaret was being bullied into some program whereby you have to go backwards to go forward and you can build slow. And like, yeah, I, think, I guess, yeah, because like with the other MLS, with some other MLMs, you have to buy like monthly to stay. Inventory and stuff. Yeah. And, to me, that was scamish. And that, <laughs> and that was like. <laughs> so I guess I wasn't supposed to say that. I don't know. <laughs> so for, for this one, it was just, I, we felt like it was it was a low cost. Yeah. You know, so, and, that, and then there was really not a lot of pressure. Yeah. And so I, mm -hmm. for like, I think in terms of the value of the business, it was like, Margaret, I like this because you're not laying out money. You can put as much effort into it as you want, but create a vision of sort of what are the pieces you need in place over the course of a year and then break it down into digestible amounts per month. If like a, like a good 5K, if anybody's ran a, a 5K, if you've come flying out of the gates, you are gonna wear yourself out and not finish. So the one thing that I think Margaret's gonna get to and in terms of like the second thing was like, how do you carry yourself and presence and stuff like that? And I think this is worthwhile to have a guy's point of view and I think half of you guys who have guys in your life would, would laugh at this. Again, back to that notion of calm down, treat it like a job. You know, if you just got hired to be Rockland Trust's uh, mortgage operator, you wouldn't be like super giddy about like everybody in the damn world today needs a Rockland Trust mortgage because I'm Rockland Trust. You would relax and go, you know what, I'm just going to try to hit my goals on a monthly basis. I'll be a great ambassador for it, but I won't try to hit it now. Like I, I won't go overboard. So like I recognize the need to put out a super positive presence on so, social media, but also relax and realize, you know, if you overdo that, you wear people out. I know? think so, he's talking about the exclamation points. Yeah, I always tell her, I'm like, however many exclamation, exclamation points you got in a paragraph, cut it in half. You know, like just, you gotta relax, <laughs> slow down, be a calm, cool presence. I know a lot of you guys, and a lot of you guys are very attractive in the sense that when you're just in a good mood, when you're just relaxed and confident, there's no need to have somebody to, to really even sell. At the end of the day, nobody, and I've had to learn this, like think about my job. You know, my job, in essence, is really interesting in the sense that I'm, like you guys are showing up to potentially sell a box of nails or something like that for 13 bucks. I'm in essence going, give me all of your money, like all of it. It's a really hard trust sale. So like you can't push that. You have to develop the trust, allow people to raise their hand when they need something. And I think for the most part, you guys all do a good job, but like sustainability and the ability to balance and go, am I trying to, to accomplish too much in one post or one conversation? 
don't do that. You know? Well, because it's definitely a marathon when yeah. it comes to the social media. It's not, you know, posting, you know, nails seven days a week. You know, you really do have like, you know, we always talk about like that social media calendar. And I even said like, you know, every Sunday is going to be a business, a business blessing, which he was like, what the what's, a business <laughs> what's a business blessing? You know? Like they all know, they all know what a business blessing is. Uh, but like, it was like, okay, I'm going to do that on Sunday. And then Thursday, I'm going to do a sample, but everything else, it's got to be my personality. Who am I? What do I like? And I really got to make sure that I'm posting that stuff. So people do get to know me, like me and trust me. So that when I do throw that out there, that they're kind of like, oh, well, you know what? She mentioned this product and I really liked it. Maybe I should try that product. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so like, I, I think I wrote down just like play the numbers game and just remember you're mm -hmm. not trying to solve anything in any one conversation, in any one post. You're never going to mm -hmm. boom, like I wrote the magic thing. That yeah, made, follow up, follow up, follow up. Yeah, but you're not going to do any magic thing that's mm -hmm. going to solve all of your problems and create the, you know, 20-year earning stream in a moment. It's really about consistency and, the you know, the constant nature of it. And I think, you know, in terms of winning, like that consistency element of it, when I was, Margaret was talking about value, one thing that I was very much in favor of is that what you guys are building is recurrent. Like if you think about it, most jobs you go to that you do work in a given month, you get paid in that month and that's it. But you guys are all building up high quality people. And if a high quality person gets another high quality person, and like in any good business, if I'm the manager that hires a guy and the guy, John, that I hire ends up becoming better than me, I'll benefit some because I hired John, but at the end of the day, John's going to succeed. But the bottom line is it's like that old game where everybody puts their hand under somebody and the person's really light to pick up. If you only have to sort of build something and you can benefit for a long time, it allows you to look forward and go, you know what? It's like working out. If I hop on a machine and bust my ass for 45 minutes and I run over and look in the mirror, I'm going to see absolutely no difference. But if I do it every day for two years, you'll see the benefit. And so like, yeah, and that's definitely how it is in direct sales. Yeah. Sure. You know, well, it's, I think yeah, it's, or all, kind of an I think it's really. all things. Cause again, yeah. I would liken it to my yeah. business and I've tried to kind of do that. Sure. Margaret's got to see me do it and in terms of, you know, like the social media side of it. Um, you know, I, I like to write a lot, and I think one of the things that resonates when people write is if it is true and natural and genuine. One thing that I think is hard for you guys is schedules. Scheduled posting is hard because you can't schedule being in the right mood to be sincere and genuine and have that vibe about you. So, like, what I've seen Margaret do pretty successfully is when she's in the mood to write, jam a bunch of stuff down on paper and then use it in the future. Mm -hmm. But either way, it was written with kind of like a real intensity about it, but at the same time, like, um, you know, good energy. So I think that's, I don't know, I, you know, it has to, I, I wrote down notes here. I said, it has to be fun. It has to be who you are. Chill out, play the numbers <laughs> game and consistency. You're never going to do it in one magic boom. You're going to have to be sort of consistent. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to enjoy it. Yeah, so. for sure. Um, you know, what other stuff, the relationship side of it? Yeah. I mean, I guess our relationship side of it, I mean, cause at the beginning I, and I think I said it to everybody. I was like, listen, I'm going balls to the wall. <laughs> I'm, I'm she didn't even have balls. So I didn't even know what she meant. <laughs> you know? But, but it was like, I just, I wanted this so bad. Um, and I just saw the potential like right away. And I'm like, I almost even wish I pushed even harder, but like, you can't, worry about what you did in the past. You know what I mean? Um, but there were times where he would say to me, like, you know, you got to get off your phone, <laughs> you know? And I was like, Oh my God, but I gotta, I have to like message this person. And this person just got back to me. And, um, it was a little bit of a struggle. It was a little bit of yeah. a back and forth because, yeah. you know, I do still work full time and we do have three kids and he actually, when did you start? Well, we were at the same, like you last know, December, early. December 1st. Okay. So a little bit over a year. So yeah. he started a new job a little bit over a year ago. Um, so he was in the thick of things um, and he was busy. So, you know, with, yeah. with three kids, it's, it, it can be crazy. But I think we have come 
like we've come a long way i'm um, open communication constantly yeah. i mean not to say that we weren't like nah, no, it was good. but like it but but he knew how much this job meant to me yeah and then we would have real one-on-one -on -one conversations about it and just kind of like talk about the potential of it and yeah. i think the value of the business like he kind of knew like all right if you make it up to the executive level like that's where the money's really at so let's try to get you there and once you get there let's talk about you know like hiring an assistant to help you so that you don't have to do you know absolutely everything and, and scale it back a little bit more for you know family time um and i definitely have gotten way better about scheduling my day to the point where it's like i usually do it the night before and i i time everything and i got my sheet right here <laughs> like i time everything because you have to be totally realistic and i think that's what was happening to me yeah. was i was thinking like okay well i'm gonna do this task well that task took two hours and you know what? I got a notification, which my notifications are off now because that was taking up my time. So my notifications would be dinging and I'd be like, oh, so let me stop what I'm doing here and let me do that notification. And that took 20 minutes. And then I try to go back and get into that. And then it just wasn't working. So I shut all my notifications off. So I don't get any notifications on Facebook. I have a certain time that when I go on there, I have to know this is what I need to get done. Yeah. And I feel like that schedule has worked and I really do try like at three o'clock when the kids come home, I usually try to shut it down. Uh, because even our kids were kind of saying, mom, like you're always in your room working. And when you hear that, that like pulls at your heartstrings and you're like, you know what? That's, it's not worth my family time because this business is supposed to yeah. give us that financial freedom not to do that. Yeah. Um, but it does, but it does take hard work. So like on a Saturday or a Sunday when I know he's home, sorry, <laughs> I will ask him to like, I'll be like, you know, I'll say to you, like, can I have yeah, yeah, an yeah. hour or two? Yeah, yeah, totally. No, to and I think what she's getting at is, you know, again, back to like wanting you guys to succeed, you know, um, Again, if you're a person who walks into a CEO and CFO's office and you guys are all kind of running your own business and I walk in and I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to invest in your business, the first question is why would they fail? And the number one reason why any of you guys would fail, I saw, you know, I see Margaret battle at energy is fatigue, is, is burnout, is I, I'm going to run really fast and then, I, and then I'm ready to puke so I can't keep running. So in my head, it's like, how can you fight that? And, and the number one thing I'd say is, it's not sunshine and rainbows. Like, you, you, you'd be wrong, and I've told Margaret, I don't want you to ever paint my, my picture is like the most supportive husband in the world and always saying like super supportive, wonderful things about the business. I'm supportive of Margaret. I'm supportive actually of a lot of the people who are on there that I know you guys, you know? <laughs> But the number one thing is to balance with, can this be achievable or not? And what's the right kind of attitude and mojo towards it? So I would talk a lot about, you're not going to accomplish it today in all likelihood. You know, like how can you create a lifestyle and a life that maybe you get to slower, but you're building a recurring daily routine that suits you. And I mean, I know you guys all have that battling thing. Like Margaret's vision is that someday she's under a palm tree on a laptop. And in reality, nobody wants to be under a laptop with a palm tree and uh, under a palm tree with a laptop in their hand. You just want to be under the palm tree. You don't really care about the laptop. So like, let's remember like this isn't unicorns and fairy tales. It's a job. So I think the allure is the flexibility, but don't ever lie to yourself that you're working today to not work tomorrow. You're working today to do it again tomorrow. So it has to be a routine that you tell yourself, don't do a routine that I don't like. Create a routine that I like. Bite off the amounts you can bite. And it's like working out. You're only making a conscious choice to not get there on a certain date. It's like if somebody said you got to lose 10 pounds and you got to do it in two months and there's taco salad out in the kitchen, which there is right now, like I might be choosing to get there in three months if I was just like, you know what? But at the end of the day, I'm, you know, we're living life for like, you want to be able to do something for 30, 40 years. You know, I, we're not, it's not a race to be done because what would done be? I don't know what that'd be. So I kind of, 
I, again, it's not sunshines and rainbows. I'm not, I haven't been like the most incredibly supportive person to every part of it, but I think I reinforce like, it's gotta be, it's gotta be happy. Like you've gotta be enjoying it. Otherwise you should just grab another day at the hospital and get guaranteed money for it. Um, you know, kind of thing. So I think sustainability is something in your head mm -hmm. that, you know, is a really important thing. So I think, you know, talking to the people around you about what you're trying to do. I think, you know, one of the things I've been the most supportive of Myra doing is when she talks to our kids about the business. Because in fairness, and I said this to Margaret, I've sucked at that. Like, I have always wanted to tell my kids and everybody around me that I don't work hard. And it's almost like, I don't know, whether it's just like um, – Growing up under my parents, it's like don't let them see you, don't let them see you sweat or whatever. I've wanted to not bring work home. Like I've 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 felt bad if I had to work on the weekends. Um, I hated when I was traveling. Margaret seems to love to go away. It's odd. It's just a very different thing. And uh, <laughs> but you know, like what I've started to rally around is when you're kind of showing your kids like, you know, Hey, I am working hard and, but there's a reward to it, you know, and mm -hmm. here's what I'm doing and maybe even getting them involved in tasks and taking my daughter out and Jake's doing some of the work. So like when I see you're kind of explaining it and talking it through, that's good. And the last thing is compare it to a job, you know, mm -hmm. um, because you can make that type of money. Yeah, no, you can make that kind of money, but also mm -hmm. too, in terms of like, I just want to be like farting around more on social media and clicking more buttons and stuff because it's good for my business. It's like, all right, at a certain point of a day, you got to call it a day. Mm -hmm. So you got to decide how much work you're going to do. You can't get addicted to the instant gratification that's clicking buttons that makes you feel like you're getting something done. There's progress and there's busyness. And, you know, I think, you know, yeah the back and forth at times with me going like, you got to chill out and you got to get off of that. And her explaining what she's doing creates a thing where it's checks and balances in that way. And like, so yeah, I think there's an element of positive reinforcement that, uh, but also too, it's remember like, you know, same for you guys is it if, I guess if you're carrying it home to like your family and stuff and they're like, Oh, this color street thing or whatever, do ask yourself, am I being a little crazy compared to what I would be like if I was just named, um, you know, a mortgage originator at a bank? Like, I probably wouldn't be jamming this down my family's throat so hard or my friend's throat so hard. Um, would I still be about that bank as opposed to another bank? Maybe. But you wouldn't be, like, heartbroken if people didn't say, like, oh, I just switched over to your bank or I didn't. You wouldn't get that emotionally invested. It would just sort of be a job. So I think this needs to be more passionate than that. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, you, you just got to ask yourself, am I being balanced in it? And remember, uh, it's like dating. It's like flirting or anything like that. There's an element of hard to get that works, you know, that if you don't seem needy, you know, you're probably in, you know, probably in a good, better position anyway. So that's so kind of all I yeah, got. I think that's probably it because we kind of hit on everything. I hope that's like helpful for you guys. If you guys have questions, feel free to um, reach out to us. Are they all muted or what's the deal? No. Well, anybody can unmute. Okay. If anybody has any questions. Dean has got a question. I, I don't. I just, you're, you're awesome. You should come on every call, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I am way too embarrassed to come on every call. I'm like, it's like, I'm like, like every other week or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he just has like a, like a different perspective of the business. Is Michelle Sometimes. Albright on? She's not a Patriots fan. I wanted to tell her. Like, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> oh, you should have saw the banter that was going on between us yesterday. <laughs> oh yeah she was like a, a i don't know a saints fan and then another i don't even know i was like yeah whatever go patriots so, there's so uh, many haters out there huh <laughs> <laughs> they all suck. But does anybody have any questions like about the numbers stuff like i i that that's the part i thought you know maybe people would you know and don't feel like you have to yeah, I mean, he, he was looking at, like, you know, our comp plan, and he's pretty good at figuring out what, you know, what would make at the end of the month. So yeah. if, like, people have, like, questions about that, like, you can even reach out. Like, he, he'll, you can message him. You know what I mean? 
Um, so. But it is like investing, you know, when, when Margaret was doing it the first several months that she wasn't making a heck of a lot of money, mm -hmm. I would sort of see, frankly, I would see you guys react to her and I'd go, there's something here. You're doing a good job here. Like people are vibing off you in a good way. So something's going right. You know, if, 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 you know, no different than coaching or playing sports or anything, if you do something and somebody else says that's the right way to go about it, I don't mind doing that. I think that's something positive and you know something good is going to come after that. But again, the, the hard thing about life, whether it's putting money aside and then watching it grow or it's putting time aside and watching the reward come in for it, it's not the same day, mm -hmm. you know, is it's going to be in the future. But what I do like about this business model, again, is it's n no necessary huge capital investment out. And then once you build it to a certain level, if you guys all look at each other, kind of like that gladiator movie where everybody kind of standing in a circle and they say, stay in the circle. If everybody sort of does their part, nobody has to sell like $5,000 in one month. It just sounds like it. You, this is where I get yeah. confused, but it kind of sounds like if everybody chugged along and qualified every month, it would be great if people did more than that. But if we all created productive people that just said, yep, we're in agreement that we're going to keep chipping away and adding more people and everybody's going to be in a good mood and kind of do their thing. The numbers get really powerful, you know, because five people underneath you and then each of them get five and then each of them get five like no getting five people doesn't seem like that much that's the way i thought about it and then <laughs> if it just keeps trickling down it gets powerful but it does like I, the fives. I love the fives yeah well because i think it's just easy to just remember in your head just think to yourself yeah. if i can get five people who really want to work this business and they can get five people i mean my god you're gonna you're gonna climb that scale pretty damn fast. You know what I mean? And if everybody, like he was saying, you know, you do need a certain amount, you know, for the month, but even if it was like you just waited and waited for those five to keep on trickling down, and even if those five were just selling 300 a month, but if they're all selling 300 a month, you know, you just need more people. But think about that. Think about if you didn't have to go out and sell 1,200 or 2,500 sets of nails. You know what I mean? It was just more people on your team. Like, think about how nice that feels. Like, that doesn't feel that bad. And then it gets back to sustainability. Like, if you get, you know, if you get two people, but you're leaning on them to do, like, crazy work, you have to ask yourself, in a year from now, will I still have one of those two people? Because you're probably leaning on them too hard. But if you look and you go, you know what, over the course of my travels over the next year, I'll get five people. And they'll appear. And you know what? I shouldn't even rush because I don't want, at the end of the day, I might fast forward two years and go, you know, one of my five, I kind of wish I, had, I hadn't pushed so hard because frankly, they don't love this business as much as they probably need to to succeed. But if they chill out and they're sustainable, now you, you're kind of on to something, you know. Mm -hmm. But again, sustainability is key. You know, and that's why at least, it, hopefully if I give you anything, it's to smile, walk away and go, chill out, be sustainable, relax. Remember that if it doesn't happen this month, it happens just a month later, you know, but it, it's more important to say like, you know, at least what I tell Margaret is, I like the opportunity, you know, as opposed to you working at the hospital, I do see a lot of opportunity here. And once you build it, it's reinforcing who you want to be as a person. All of you guys talking are good to each other, you know, so I think there's a healthy element to that. Um, and then, like I said, the product's nails. You're not trying to convert somebody's religion and trying to get them to, <laughs> you know, switch a big part of their life. It's like, you know, these nails look like the Patriots. Great. You know, somebody wants them or, you know, <laughs> it's Halloween. It's just, it's kind of fun and insignificant. So remember to so, try to keep it that way. So we got like two minutes left. Um, so I just wanted to quickly just talk about conference, which is in Orlando. Sorry to let you guys like... <laughs> I just thought it'd be fun. Yeah. You, you, All right. See you, everyone. We only have a few. Bye, Greg. Minutes. All right. Thank you. Um, Thank you so the conference is open to every single stylist. It doesn't, you know, doesn't matter your rank. Um, last year, the registration was $175 for the early board, and then it went up to $225. I don't know if that's going to remain the same, but just so that you guys kind of have an idea, they have space for 4,000 stylists. 
Um, they are going to have a breakout session for team leaders and above. So that could be kind of a goal for you to reach team leader by conference. I think that would be really awesome. Um, they blocked off rooms at the hotel, so don't worry about it. We will be able to stay there. Um, they did do recognitions last year, and some people got to walk across uh, the stage. So if that's something that you've been dreaming about, you might want to you know, start thinking about that. But it's going to be August 16th through the 18th, and hopefully the email is going to come out soon. Um, it was supposed to come out today, but I don't know what happened. Um, so we can chat about that, though, on our team page. And then if anybody has any questions about tonight, just let me know. Um, you can either write it under the comments of the video or, you know, private message us. Awesome. I'm looking for it. It's less than a minute, but. Yay, thank you. Did, thank you. did everybody look at the, um, at the conference place, the hotel? Gorgeous. Yeah, it, it looks amazing. Uh, yes. The spa looks fabulous. I haven't, <laughs> oh, I haven't looked at it yet. Oh my God. You gotta go. That was an go. awful teaser. <laughs> yep. Hey, yeah. don't forget to answer Sarah's question, Margo. She's got a good question. Okay. Like, obviously, after the call ends, but I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah, we're going to get cut off. Oh, yeah, we are. Okay, it's Lexi's guys. birthday Thank you weekend. So much. Bye. Whose birthday weekend? Lexi's. Oh, happy Ooh. birthday weekend. Oh, no. No, no you have to go. No, you have to come. <laughs> I just Fly her down. Win. You Fly can't down. win. Yeah.